Okay, so let's see if I can get this set up here. There's not a ton of room. So I have, at this point, I have just channel one on 1%, which are these blues. And let me grab a ground extender here. Okay, so I have the uh, LED set up. I got the scope on in the background. I flip it on. So I have the, the blue channel on at 1%. I have this uh, wire here to extend my accelloscope ground. And I'm gonna attempt to probe the dimming wires and see if I get anything out of it. Okay, so I've been playing with this for a little while now and I think I figure out how it works. Um, real quick, let me just kind of show you my setup here. Hopefully we can get and turn this light out. Should be able to get all this in. This is an Arduino Do. This is importantly a 3.3 volt Arduino. We have the original channel wire I unplugged and then the scope trace which is coming from the Arduino Do. And what I did was I just analog wrote pins 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 at different intervals. And as you can see, uh, as I change it, you'll see on the scope that the frequency actually changes. So it appears to me what they're actually doing to drive these is it uses 3.3 volt PWM. The max I get on the scope when I have it all connected is 3.3 volts. So that's why I went with the 3.3 volt Arduino. So based upon the way it looks for me, it'll be super simple to drive it. Uh, on this connector, you have on off, 12 volts, PWM and ground. So what happens is when you take 12 volts and jump it across, as you can see I did here, from blue to violet, that turns the channel on. So if I actually unplug this wire, you'll see it'll turn that channel out. So to make this work, I can use a digital pin on the Arduino to basically transfer 12 volts from this pin to uh, that pin, and that turns the channel on. Now by default, it starts out at 1%. So if I unplug the PWM signal, you'll see it's actually 1%. Now if I plug this into pin two, I think this is 50, analog right 50. So you remember the value is from zero to 255. If I move it to pin three, that's 100. And then you have 150, 200, and then pin six is 255 or 100%. So let me just show you that on the scope here. So there's 100%, and you can't see down here, I don't think so, but it says the mean is 3.27 volts. So almost full scale 3.3 3 .3 volts. So now I'll unplug it. You'll see the blue hue goes away, the blue hue, and we'll go down to pin five. Let me just adjust the time base and you can see a nice PWM signal. We're high for one, two, three, four. Looks like four blocks. And we're at 2.5 volts. We'll move down to five. And you can see we're only high for about three divisions. And uh, it's on 200 ultra seconds. Uh, per division there it looks like and we'll move it down to four okay so that's pin four you can see we're about half the waveform and I started out with two is 50 three is a hundred and four is uh, 150 so analog right 150 is this one we move it down to three and then we'll move it down to two which is right there. So that's two of analog right 50. Here is three again. Here's four. Here's five. And then here is six, which is full analog right 255. So this is going to be easier than I thought. Uh, if you've been following my videos, you know I made a zero to 10 volt analog shield, and I won't need that. All I'll need to control this is the uh, Typhon code with a 3.3 volt Arduino and that's it and it'll work fine. Uh, I won't need the factory board down here because 
I'm going to completely do away with that. Now that's if I can get the thing, to, the actual code to work. I thought about leaving this board, having it come on and off, and then just use the Arduino with this pin connect, uh, disconnected, which is what I did here. You can see I just have the pin out of the connector here. And now I can use control this with just straight PWM from the Arduino. Uh, the only issue with that, of course, is going to be then the Arduino clock and this clock are going to have to be exactly the same for timing mechanism wise. So, and, all right, one last uh, little note I'll do here. What I did was I went ahead and hooked up the system back to factory. Okay, guys, one thing before I go here. I went ahead and uh, reconnected all the wires. I am probing the ground, which is the red, and the black, which is the PWM pin. And that is going to my oscilloscope here. And what I'm going to do is just run through the manual control and show you that on the oscilloscope. So right now we're at uh, 2. Let's move up to 20. You can see there's 20. And we'll go to 50. That's 50. Let me just adjust my trigger lever here. You can see there's 50%. And that's about 50% due to cycle. And we'll go up to 75. And then let's go all the way up to 100. And you can see 100 is 100. full DC at showing at the bottom 3 volts. So it's actually showing 100% is 3.5. 06 volts. Oops, I just hit the pro wire. So it's actually showing 3.06 volts as the mean voltage. So let's back it down now. This is going backwards from 100. And let's go to 50%. Let's see what the voltage says. The voltage at 50% says 1.55 volts. And all the way back down to 1%. Okay, so I'm working on the Ocean Revive T247 switch over to the Typhoon LED controller. So this is the Typhoon LED controller. Let me just take you on the back here. Okay, so on the Arduino board, I have a real-time clock here on the top. I have a four-channel relay shield and then a 3.3 volt, 16 megahertz, at mega 328p and it's just a tqf package it doesn't make a difference you can use a regular arduino the important thing is it's at eight volts excuse me 3.3 volts all right so here's what we have uh, this is from the led driver and i've disconnected it from the timer module uh remember this is 12 uh this is on off this is 12 volts the next pin over is pwn and the last one is ground so i have ground going to ground I have the on off and the 12 volts running on these white wires to the relay and then this white wire here which is the scope probe that's hooked up it's coming from the PWM pen through a 1k resistor so here is my PWM signal in the back and according to this my brightness is at 14 now what I'm gonna do is just scroll through here and I'm gonna go to manual timer and go off you'll see that it turns the relay off which turns the fan off and the LEDs are out as well as on the screen there's no signal <clears throat> if I go to manual override and start creeping up as soon as I get to 1% it'll give me a slight PWM signal it turns the relay back on which gives power to the unit and then the LEDs come on and so what I'll do is I'll just step through and you can see in the background the PWM signal in the scope. So let's go to 50%. There's 50% and we'll just kind of give you a quick blue. I don't know how washed out it's going to be on the camera. Alright, and what I'll do is I'll go back to timer mode. 
and that'll give me back to my 14% the PWM signal drops and the lights dim down so anyhow it's done it's that simple I cannot believe it's that simple unfortunately I couldn't figure out another way of giving 12 volts to drive these units so what usually happens is these two wires connected to end the 12 volt goes to on off and the only way I could come up with to do it would was through a relay shield which kind of stinks because I have to use a relay shield I think what I might end up doing is getting a solid state relay shield instead of having mechanical relays but for now I have it working with the Typhoon controller the other thing I tried was just to remove the ground and thinking maybe I could put another digital pen instead of it controlling the relays I could have it control this ground that doesn't seem to make a difference if I disconnect the ground it works and the other issue is if, if I just straight connect these together then you can never turn the LEDs off so it works and that's the cool thing so I needed four channels to control the on off a four channel relay so what I'm gonna do is just run like a uh, connector cable and a serial cable and actually you should be able to plug it in to give me my access to these wires that way I don't have to hack up this board so if I want to put it back to factory I can and it'll just continue to ramp one up uh, throughout the day so really that simple there's a post uh, I found on one of the forums that talks about the reason why they didn't do a ramp and controllers because it would add 75 to a hundred dollars now I don't necessarily agree with that I mean I, they're selling these typhoon controllers for I don't know about 50 bucks and I guess if you add the relay shield in there maybe uh, maybe I can see the $75 but this seems like a pretty inexpensive hack I mean you can get the four channel relays on eBay for like eight bucks or something An LCD screen really inexpensive Arduino I mean I maybe have $20 tied up in this and I get full ramping so that's really kind of cool so that's just an update I'll come back to you when I get the rest of it all kind of buttoned together and we'll go from there okay so moving right along what I did was I had uh, two small little connector blocks here it's got four header pins in each of them with different color wires have this running down to a serial cord here I just put a small hole right here at the end of the unit so I can run my wire and what will happen is this will run over to this part right there so I'm just gonna put a little zip tie in put a little zip tie in right here to hold that cable back and then I'm gonna set the top half back on it okay so I have the connectors on I have my uh, wiring diagram here with the serial pin numbers and then the colors I uh, just put a little bit of uh, protect it so they don't short out and now I can fold the case all back together okay so I was editing the video for my Typhoon LED controller specifically for the Arctic T247 and a couple things that I just wanted to kind of reiterate and talk about specific things I did unique to me so first of all this is an Atmega 328P it's a TQFP package and I have it soldered to this little adapter board and then uh, this is a spark fun shield that I essentially made my own Arduino with now the reason why that's important is there's only a couple of PWM pins on this board two of those pins are five and six so what I did was instead of soldering for example uh, digital pin D5 to the D5 spot I actually soldered to the D2 spot and that essentially makes my D2 header location a PWM pin now in the sketch you still have to call it D5 now the reason why that's important is on this relay shield that I'm using it has predetermined pins that control the relays and that is actually four five six and seven well five and six are PWM pins so I couldn't use those pins for PWM if I'm using them for this shield the other problem with that is I can't move these pins because these wires are really small I thought about trying to cut traces and actually resolder to different spots but I just didn't think that was going to be a reliable connection so when I wired this up and I essentially just use these little jumper wires I wired them up specifically in that fashion so for example uh, D5 now in D2 D6 is now in D8 
So D8's in D6's spot. So on the relay shield, four, five, six, and seven is really four, two, eight, and seven. I hope that makes sense. The other thing I did was I had a 3.3 volt regulator. So I'm going to bring five volts in on the VN pin here and give me 3.3 volts out. Because the important thing is, is that this is 3.3 volts because that's the max voltage the Arctic T247 can take that I found from my testing. Now, it's still a 16 megahertz crystal because I didn't have any 8 megahertz crystals. So if I would have had an 8 megahertz, I would have made it that. And then also the bootloader on this is the Arduino Uno. So in the selection menu, you just say Arduino Uno. Now, I thought about using the 32U4, which is the chip on the Leonardo it has built-in USB. The problem is in the data sheet, it says that the max, the minimum voltage is 4.5 volts for a 16 megahertz crystal. So I figured I would just stick with this chip and go that route. Uh, this is the relay shield I'm using. And it's just a standard one I got off of eBay. There's nothing uh, high tech about it. It takes five volts on the uh, five volts on this five volt pin and the ground powers the, the relays in this circuitry over here. And then when you give it a high to four, five, six, or seven, it turns these relays on. And then this board is just a little board I made to make all my connections. You see I have my four 10K uh, pull-down resistors. I have my 1K resistors for my PWM outputs. Uh, this white wire goes to the LCD backlight. And then on the top is my RTC. And then all the wires that go with it. So I finally got it working the way I want. Now I'm ready to put it in an enclosure. Originally, if you remember from my other video, I had it kind of in this case. The problem is this is about with this case and the, the other half, it's too thin to accept all these boards. So I got a little bit bigger project enclosure here. And what I'm gonna do is stick the LCD in here and then the rest of the boards and I'll go from there. Now, unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to have to desolder these DB9 connectors. And these are what I actually connect to the T247s because I don't want to put a huge hole in the back of this. So I have to desolder these wires, run them through, and then resolder them together. So sit tight. I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I drilled some holes at the back of the case, desoldered the wires, and ran them through. And so now I have a nice setup for my board. Uh, I went ahead and made this green wire here, which is now the PDM for the light, just a little longer so I could have a little more flex because I'm going to mount the LCD uh, up, you know, up in here somewhere. All right, so I'm going to get the LCD mounted. Uh, I have to drill some holes for the push buttons and I'll be back again. Okay, so I got the our Arduino here in the box. I got my LCD with my buttons mounted up. I'm just going to get this together. And if it it's really nice, uh, as you can see here, just make sure there's nothing hitting the wires. I think what I'm going to do is just stick a just stick like a, a an insulator piece in here so I don't have to worry about the LCD and Arduino shorting out and the push button specifically and grab my um, so make sure you get a good shot of that here so we got the uh, LCD here this oh you know what else I need to do is adjust the uh, LCD brightness so let me just plug it in and give it a test Alright, so all the relays are working. We'll slide this little piece of cardboard over top. This has a little protectant and we'll slide the screen down and we'll take the screws and put them in. Alright, one thing I forgot to do was add these uh, strain relief so that it doesn't try to pull the wires. So just put little zip ties on here.
to strain relief. So when they folds up into the case, they'll hit the zip ties and won't pull the wire through. Okay, there it is. There's the finished product. You see I have the two cords. Uh, I have this one here is color coded so I know which one it goes with. Let me go ahead and uh, turn this around here and I'll turn it on. So it's not, you're not gonna be able to see it. it's too bright, but you can see there's the time and the channels are supposed to be off. If I hit the red button, that takes me through the menu, and I know it's going to be really bright on the camera here, and then I can start scrolling through all the start times. Okay, guys, that's going to conclude the video. Thanks for watching. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you have any suggestions, I'm going to post the code down below. If you have any suggestions for the code, how to make it better, please reply back and let us know. I'm not a programmer by day, so I don't do this stuff every day. I did modify the Typhon controller to to use those that relay board. So I think I did it right. It seems to be working pretty consistently. And this project's actually been running for about a week now. So that's why I'm finally making an enclosure now. All right, guys, remember hit that uh, like button down below. And thanks for watching.